Hey, JD Nudge, your word of truth. Sunset Beach, California, world famous surf city. All praises, honor, and glory to the Heavenly Father, the only begotten Son. <laughs> the light's probably trippy here, huh? It's been, the weather's been unbelievable. And the Holy Spirit. <laughs> the Holy Spirit. People throw that word around like, Like they know what it is. <laughs> uh, the Holy Spirit's no joke, people. <sighs> Lovely people. Heavenly Father. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm. Yes, 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 indeed. We agree. Thank you. Yes. Yes. We agree. We honor you. We praise you. We listen. We, we hear your voice. And we agree. You're right. You're right. You're right. Amen. So, we're talking about friend. What's a friend? What's a friend? Friend is like a wife or a husband or a a child to a to a loving parent. A friend is closer than family. A friend you die for a friend. Um, John fifteen thirteen. Um, so we were, the issue, the issue where we're at right now, I'm going to try and just break it down. We're at this place where we're trying to figure out who we're a friend with. Are we a friend of the world? Are we a friend of Trump? Are we a friend of Mick Jagger? Who, who's our friend? Bob Marley. <laughs> He's one of my friends. Ziggy. So we, we're looking for this loyalty, this vow, someone that can stick to their vow, who won't stumble, who won't be offended when you're not perfect, when you're just who you are. And if you're different from what the world tells you to be, if you start acting peculiar, people run away. People run away because you're not towing the line. You're not you're not agreeing with what everyone else is agreeing with, right? You, you've offended them. Now they want to go with someone who makes them comfortable, who will act the part they want you to act. Whatever you do, don't be yourself, because if you be yourself, you're not going to have any friends. So anyway, I'm just fucking off. I'm just pontificating 
philosophizing or whatever. So it doesn't have a lot of value, but it might open some of your eyes when I say things like this. Um, let's get back to the scripture. So um, Jesus told Peter, there's going to be a lot of people offended. All you shall be offended because of me this night. All of you. We're all stumbled. We're all stumbled. By the world coming against Jesus. So do we really understand who he is? Is it is it easy? Is it is he saying it's going to be easy to understand me, man? You guys are all going to get it this night. You're all going to understand. No, he says you're all going to get fucked up. You're all going to stumble. Does that give you a lot of faith and hope that you're going to be able to figure it out? No, that scares the shit out of me. All of you are going to fuck up. I'm going to fuck you all up. I'm going to trip every last one of you niggas. So I've... Entered into this study of the Bible. Listening. And now I'm hearing... Things that I haven't heard before, even clearer. Things that were in my spirit. Things that have been shown to me out here in the world. This this has been shown to me. I'm gonna stumble all you fucking dumb niggas. You all are gonna fall. You're all gonna be look like dumb asses. You're all gonna be little manipulative little thieves and and Backstabbing little cunts. Oh, the, oh, the language. Oh, you understand what I'm saying? That's what he's saying. I'm gonna stumble all of you. All you shall be stumbled because of me this night. Do we understand why he did it? Do we really understand why he, why this story to, was portrayed so perfect, perfectly perfected? It's perfected. It's it's odd. It's oddly perfected. It's so layered and see when we get this far into it, this is where I'm. This is where I hit the wall. This is where I hit the wall. Do we really know why he did that? Why God did that? Why did he do that? Why did he come down here and get in a body like us and pretend and actually feel it? He actually feel, feels it. He felt it in some way, probably exactly like we do. He wanted to see how it felt to be a man. So he could understand his creation. It was part of the plan. So what's the plan? What was his plan? His plan was to create a consciousness that could apprehend himself as other. So here we are. Nestling up as close as we can. I want to be your friend. I want to know you as other. And so we could philosophize. I could tell you what I think about that. But it's kind of up to you to, to figure it out. I don't, I'm, it's not a, it's not an easily answered question. Why did he do this? Why are we 
apprehending him as other. I'll give you my short answer. Because we're not other. We're only a manifestation of himself as other. If you can understand philosophical <laughs> theorizing, these are things that are in the spirit. We can't prove these things, but we pontificate on them because we think of this creator who made us. So anyway, that's enough of that. He came in some way to enliven us about who we see when we see God as other. And so, Peter said, Though I should die with you, yet will I not deny you. Likewise also said all the disciples. So, what's easier? To run away from death or run away from belief? I won't deny you, but I'll die with you. No, you... No, yeah, you... Yeah. You'll run away from knowing me, but yeah, you will die for me. He's saying, no, it, we're, we're going to die for you, but we're not going to deny you. What they do, they ended up dying for him, but they, they, did, he, they did deny him. They did run, turn their back on him. So when you think of these people that talk about Judas Iscariot being the one who betrayed Jesus... You know what kind of setup that is? That's setting you up to make you think that there's other that's bad out there. No, it wasn't me. It was Jesus Iscariot. It wasn't me. It was Johnny. It wasn't me. It was Sally. It wasn't me. It was... Judas Iscariot was the only one that fucking stood up. All the other bitches... We're hiding, sleeping. Why did they go to sleep when Jesus was praying? Because when you're asleep, you're unconscious. They are unconscious of their own actions. They fell asleep. They're not aware, right? Sleepy heads. They don't, they don't want to wake up and face the truth, and that's what we see in the world. That's where this woke, asleep, verbiage, language comes in. Sleeping. Wake up, wake up, wake up. Wake up! Wake up to the fact that you're going to get stumbled. You're going to trip. You cannot not turn your back on Jesus. You will. I will. We probably all are going to bitch out. I didn't take my grandma's pills. It was him. It was her. Yeah, you did. You pillhead. So, then Jesus' prayer in Gethsemane. Then came Jesus with them into a place called Gethsemane. Um, I forget what Gethsemane means. It says, Gethsemane is the garden spot, western slope of the Mount of Olives, where Jesus frequently went. The temple lay directly opposite across the Kidron Valley. It was a place of Christ's agonizing prayer, Judah's betrayal, and Christ's arrest. A grove of ancient olive trees stands there today next to the Church of All Nations. What do the olive trees represent, lovely people? Beautiful Masha people of the Most High, Rastafari rule. And reign over all Israel and all creation. Rastafari. Conquering Lion of Judah. We rise. The olive trees are the oil. That's why the Gethsemane is like. How many. How many anointings. 
what kind of anointing went on in that Gethsemane? This is where there's lots of oil. There's lots to learn right here. Shit that's deep, deep, deep. Deep stuff. Sir, and said to the disciples, sit here while I go and pray yonder. And he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and began to be sorrowful and very, very heavy. Heavy, deep. It's heavy, man. That's heavy. That's some heavy shit, brah. Ohana, what up, a heavy? <clears throat> grieved, sorrow, grieved. Benjamin, Benjamin, son of my sorrow, Benoni. The original name from Rachel. My, I'm going to name him Benoni, son of my sorrow. Big babies, Benjamites. Touchy feely little sentimental little boogers. Little baby. Last last little child of Jacob and Rachel, the baby of the family. Crying all the time. Crying out to people. Crying out. Listen. Sorrowful, sorrow and grief. And he said unto them, My soul is exceedingly sorrowful, even unto death. Wait here and watch with me. Do I have any choice? Do I have to? I do. I do. Told you if I didn't yell, I was going to cry. Um. All right. Um. Wait here and watch with me. And he went a little farther and fell on his face and prayed, saying, Oh, my father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. <clears throat> Sound like a harpazo situ situation? Hey, man, can, we, can you just beat me up? Can you just beat me up? I don't want it. I don't know if I can do it, Lord. I don't know if I have that much love in my heart to to do this. What do you what do you what are you making me? Some kind of martyr? Am I some kind of martyr? For all these wicked friends of yours? <clears throat> Am I a martyr for all these wicked friends of yours? Okay, all right. Your will be done, not mine. All right, all right. I won't, I won't harpot, so I'll, I'll take my shot. <clears throat> I'll take it on the chin. I'll take it like a man. I'll take it like an Israelite. I'll man up. What makes more sense to you, people, considering the scriptures? It's not... <laughs> So when I go over these things that it tears me up that um, it's so obvious to me and it's so 
hidden from people like Tony Williams. And a lot of people. Anyhow, um, take this cup. Can you take this cup for me? I don't want, I don't, I'm not sure I want to do it. You know what? Fuck it. Whatever you want, Lord. You're the master. Right? And he came unto the disciples and found them asleep and said to Peter, What? Could you not watch with me for one hour? <laughs> What came to my spirit right now is um, you come back all these times. You have all these hours of your existence. So he's saying out of, out of all these times you've been here, out of all these lives you've lived, you couldn't have just picked one miserable life one life to live for me. You couldn't just pick one and say, I'm going to be loyal. I'm going to vow the Nazarite vow. I'm going to be a priest unto my God. I'm. This is my turn. This is my hour. No man knows the time or hour or whatever. There's, all these things connect, but it's hard when... Um, Everyone's talking nonsense and it distracts you from actually thinking about what these things mean. You couldn't watch for one hour, red letter. You couldn't watch, you couldn't take one of your miserable little lives that I've given you and gave it to me. You couldn't do that. Not one. So if you read the Bible as a regenerated living Bible, you've been here forever, ever, ever, ever. How long have you been here? You haven't lived for me yet. Is what he's saying. Why do you just turn your back and fall asleep and, and you're unconscious of me? When are you going to fully be conscious of me? You're all going to stumble. That's all of us. We None of us have been able to do it. Because when the chips are down, we're offended. We're offended. What are we offended by? Well, as an Israelite, I'm offended that God made humans, man. It's offensive to an angel. We don't we didn't get it. We didn't like it. We didn't we didn't buy it. <laughs> we weren't on board. But in the bigger picture, None of us wants to want to be told what to do. No one wants to bow to a higher power. No one. So what does that mean? That means we have the spirit of God. We have that creative spirit and we, we fight against God because we know that we're part of the creation. We're part of the creative powers. That's my opinion. That's my opinion, people. These are the things that I... These are the walls that I run up against because I'm trying to get to the bottom of this crap that's been torturing me for forever. What do the angels do? We're, we're looking into this crap. And I hate to say this crap because for us, it's like, it's like an unsolvable puzzle that we can't stop looking for pieces to. And it's frustrating and hurtful and the closer we get the more painful it gets and all that kind of stuff right can you understand me where I'm coming from can you understand where I'm coming from you know what I'm saying <laughs> you know what I'm saying it's fucking spiritual life lessons guys <laughs> you know what I'm saying man you know what I'm saying man you know what I'm saying man some guys can hardly verbalize their thoughts 
and they're trying to teach spiritual things. Anyway. Um, let me continue. We're in Matthew 26. What, you couldn't stay awake for one hour? Watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. <sighs> What's he saying? The spirit wants to get it right, but the flesh is fighting. Flesh doesn't want to die. Flesh doesn't want to be martyred. Flesh doesn't want to get on the cross. Flesh doesn't want to die for anyone. Not even, especially not itself. Flesh doesn't want to die for anyone, especially not itself. So I've been saying, give up the body, give up the body, give up the body, this, this. It's a spiritual thing, people. He's saying, can't you just give up your body once? For a minute, just for a second, just don't think of your body, think of the spirit. It's almost impossible. That's why he says all of you are going to stumble over your body. You're going to stumble. You're going to stumble over physical things. I'll be back one more. Then we'll, no, I'll finish it up. Number three, I'll, I'll get it. I'll get it. J.D. Nigel, Word of Truth. <sighs> yeah. All right. I love you guys. Subscribe. Um, and we'll study the Bible for real, for real.